We start with the first topic here in Balloon Hall. We called it safer data for safer world. What does that mean and how to get to the safer world knows Bogdan Viher, Global Channel Director of HYCU and Jelena Radojčić, Channel Account Manager at HYCU. So, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's session, Safer Data for Safer World. At Haiku, our mission is to build safer world. So today we will give you a background um, how we are up, okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, today we will give you a background how uh, we are doing it in um, why that's more important than it's ever been uh, and uh, how we are doing it, how we are uh, solving these challenges and business outcomes that um, we can help you achieve. So data protection world change, has changed a lot. And with uh, increasing ransom attacks, uh, we see that uh, they're increasing both in frequency and severity. I'm not sure if you're aware that uh, one ransom attack happens every 11 seconds. So every 11 seconds, there is somebody that has impact by ransom attack. And the downtime of one successful ransom attack is more than 20 days. But for businesses, um, what we see is very important to know the impact of these ransom attacks. Uh, based on the research that was done last year, we came to a number of uh, that average cost of one ransom attack was more than four million dollars. So somebody had to pay four million dollars to get their data back. Yeah. So, but I. Ransomware attacks are not only things that are threatening your data today. There are also some human error. There are some like uh, disaster, natural disasters and etc. Whatever, the, but all of these are causing downtime that is very expensive and business critical um, for your companies, right? So why these ransomware attacks are so successful? Exactly because more than 70% of business data, business critical data, is not protected. <clears throat> but let's see why is this happening, why this business critical data is they are not protected. We can just go through the evolution of IT and find out how 20 years ago life was simple. So we had everything on premise, easy for IT organization to uh, monitor, to protect, everything was visible, and for them, easy to maintain, right? 10 years ago, we see public cloud are coming on the scene, as well as few SaaS applications. Still, the situation is not that complicated, right? So, but five years ago, things starting to be a bit tricky. So we are seeing on-premise uh, like decreasing, and uh, on, the, on the scene we see Platform as a Service showing up in DPS, so, and a few other SaaS applications. But what's going on today? Today we see SaaS application explosion. So, and because of the SaaS ex uh, application explosion, uh, the regular data, like I would say, like average data of one company resides on 200 different places. So, and it's okay. They, data can be anywhere, right? But are you sure that your data is protected? Well, let, let me share with you one scary information about these attacks that happened last year. More than half of these uh, attacks that happened last year actually came through this SaaS application. And the success rate was 15%, more than 50%. So the business industry, like data protection industry, are today facing with two big challenges. The first challenge is lack of visibility. So we are all aware that IT has a full control and visibility of these three tiers. But when it comes to SaaS application, the situation is different. SaaS application, the visibility is limited or there is no visibility at all. So what does it mean? 
means that your IT organization are really not aware of every SaaS application that you are using or your employees are using currently in your uh, company. And this is a business critical. You will say by the slide you saw how, how often happens ransomware attack through SaaS application. And then we have lack of ability to protect data. Even if your IT has a full visibility of all of these, of, of all environment and all applications and all data that is like, like residing on these platforms, is there ability for them to save, like to protect this data? Unfortunately not. Okay, back. So um, actually there is a myth uh, behind uh, this data protection of SaaS application. They said the vendor is actually uh, protecting their data by default. So if they sell you a SaaS application, they have your data protected. And in the case of any disaster, you can recover this data very fast. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So in most cases, these vendors, or some, or I think maybe all of them, uh, actually have this uh, shared responsibility model in place with you. So what, is mean, what is, does this mean? It means that data is your responsibility. So when it comes to any type of uh, like disaster, cyber attacks, and so ever, it's your uh, responsibility to have this data protected. So, I would say that this is something where we came in the scene and we faced already these challenges. So, that's why we came with a solution called Haiku Protégé. Haiku Protégé is a, a data protection platform that is uh, providing a sim simple, actually we are providing a simple data protection with uh, equivalent level of support, data backup and recovery support through across uh, on-prem, public cloud and SaaS workloads. And uh, Haiku is currently uh, the uh, fastest growing leader in the backup as a service industry. And just don't take our words for it, as you can see, we have a strong financial banking from a capital venture, capi uh, capital venture firms and uh, industry leading SaaS applications that actually, actually SaaS uh, uh, firms that actually truly believe in our platform and our uh, strategy direction. Uh, currently on the market, we have the highest NPS score. It's more than 90. And it comes from these 3,600 customers that we have worldwide from 75 countries. So Haiku Protégé uh, simply is a SaaS platform on which you can have, like depends on the use case in data protection, you can have backup and recovery by the all other use cases right in the uh, data protection. You can have backup and recovery, ransomware protection, cost-effective uh, disaster recovery, for both hybrid and multi-cloud world, as well um, meeting security and compliance criteria with data mobility and migration. Uh, also uh, including automated uh, discovery of application. With our Haiku Protégé, we addressed both of the challenges that currently data protection is facing. So I will give now words to Bogdan to tell us how, actually how we are solving these uh, current challenges. Thank, Thank you. you, Elena. Thank so, you. so as we have seen, the, the key challenge is that the modern applications are typically built across three technology pillars, you could call them, right? One is infrastructure. And we know you can have infrastructure on-premise. It can run in cloud. It can also be running as a SaaS application uh, out there. Then you have applications and databases, right, that uh, run typically on your infrastructure. And then there is the third pillar, and this is the most critical pillar, pillar lately, where a lot of data is sitting in, in SaaS applications or uh, platform as a service uh, resources. And there is no easy way to protect that data because that data is considered like a black box. You really don't have access to it in a traditional way 
because vendors are encapsulating those resources and protecting them themselves. So it's not easy to access that. But how do you actually go and protect that data? That's the key challenge here. And we believe that backup industry does not have a good answer to that. So how do we solve this data protection gap is the big question. And we have been working on this for the last two years as a company. This was one of the key challenges we wanted to resolve. And we came up with solutions to the two key challenges that Jelena has just presented, which is lack of visibility and lack of ability to protect data. So if you consider this new modern application stack that we all of us, when we modernize, more or less start to use, right? If you think HubSpot is a typical SaaS application. Salesforce, I see Salesforce is going to be used today in, uh, as part of the presentation, is also a SaaS application. So, and there are, as Jelena said, more than 200 SaaS applications mid-sized companies are using today. And now that data is protected, right? Everybody thinks, well, Vendor is protecting it for us, right? But it's not the case. So how do we first give you visibility where your data is sitting across the entire uh, application stack that you're using? So we have, over the last two years, we were thinking very hard how to deliver the capability around that. And we came uh, across the idea that we simply need to be able to easily visualize uh, for information security officers, for example, where the data is sitting. So which departments are accessing which parts of the you know, internal or external environment, SaaS applications, for example. And by allowing you to have this visibility where data is sitting, regardless of on-prem in the cloud or in SaaS, you actually get full visibility of that. So that's step one. But then information security officers also need to know, hey, am I protecting this data? Am I compliant in terms of our data protection policies or not? And that's the second part. We are also attaching these indicators, whether you're protecting or not certain elements of your application stack with uh, adequate data protection policies, right? So this is what we call our graph. We kind of use letter R as a synonym for resilience. So this is the first part of the solution, right? Give IT and information security officers visibility where data is sitting and whether it's protected or not. So now they can start making informed decisions and decide, okay, I need absolutely protected this, this, and that. This is not so critical because it's not production, things like that, right? So this is a good starting point. But then the second is, once you understand where your data is sitting, how can you go about protecting it? And this is a much bigger challenge because the entire data protection industry, if you look at any backup vendor out there, not just us, but anybody across the Gartner Magic Quadrant, nobody actually has a universal solution for that until now. So we have been thinking long and hard, how do we go about this problem? Because the entire data protection industry would you believe me if I told you that they protect less than 10 SaaS applications across the whole Gartner Magic Quadrant? So if you look at the, the, the most popular backup vendors that you probably know about, if you count the number of SaaS applications they protect combined together, it's less than 10. And there are 17,000 in US alone. I believe 30,000 SaaS applications globally. There is simply no way the data protection industry will ever catch up with this explosion of SaaS and allow you right, to evolve your digital commerce platforms the way, they, the way you want to. So obviously there has to be a big, better way and that's the second capability we have now just released, which we kind of call our cloud, but it's really a way to not be alone in this battle to deliver SaaS data protection, but to open up our platform for external integration so that you know, a SaaS vendor can decide, hey, I want to build a, a cool module for, for a data protection platform that Heiko has delivered for my SaaS applications. We will develop those modules. Anybody out there can develop those modules. And then we are going to be able to certify those models and publish them in what we call Heiko Marketplace. So if you are a company who, you know, in first step, 
uh, discovers, well, I'm using across my company 50 SaaS applications. I want to protect these 25 because they're absolutely critical. You just go to the marketplace and you do, ta -ta -ta, you know, select, subscribe to the ones you want to protect. And basically you're done in 50 minutes, right? So that's really the secret and the way how to move forward with this SaaS explosion that we are really seeing today. And, you know, if you ask a question like what you should be doing today, you are obviously on a digital commerce modernization um, path. And you always have to be thinking about data protection because what we hear a lot is, ah, oh, we are not, never going to be attacked, right? But hope is not a strategy, right? If you hope you will not be attacked, that's probably a very false uh, uh, hope. It's really more a question of when you're going to attack, not if. You really, when you go on the path of digital uh, you know, commerce modernization, you have to be thinking about how am I going to protect my data. It has to be your central thought about everything you do because the slightest um, security gap you will leave open, somebody will take advantage of and your whole business can crush together, right? So it's just not something you want to expose yourself to. And then after you've done that, you also need to start planning, okay, when I get attacked, not if, when I get attacked, what is my response going to be, right? How am I going to solve this? You need to have these uh, disaster ransom recovery plans and you need to exercise them constantly. And then the third one, and really the last, is practice, 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 right? Your IT teams need to also implement those plans and practice in their execution. And then things they learn, they need to feed back and improve those plans so that when this happens, you are easily recovering in, let's say, one or two hours and your company just continues to function, right? So the downtime is minimal and, uh, you know, you successfully go through this, unfortunately, very uh, big uh, challenge that the, the whole industry is facing. So that's from us today. Hope it was uh, information. Thank you very much. Maybe some questions? Okay, thank you.